A while back, we named the best NBA player at every ring total, but in this video, we're going to do the opposite, as we've got the worst player from every ring total, all the way from 0 to 11. And by worst, I mean least best, since being good enough to even make it into the NBA means you're insanely talented at basketball. This might even be the first time you even learn that some of these players even existed. And if you want to learn about more sports that exist, go follow Sports You Never Knew Existed on Snapchat. The game day started a new Snapchat series that's going to cover a lot of awesome topics. Click the link down below to follow and learn more. When choosing the worst or least best player to never win a ring, you are in a way deciding who is the worst player in NBA history. Now, the way to answer this question can go a number of routes. You can either decide what has been the most detrimental player in history, like say, a number one pick that turned out to be a bust, or you can go with a player who has little to no stats. The hardest part about this is you can't really factor in intangibles, and it would be unfair to use G League, International, or College Breakdown film to base NBA talent. You can use non-NBA film to predict talent in the future, but it doesn't really work so well in reverse. For example, Anthony Bennett averaged 18 points per game in the G League and averaged 16 points per game in college. I don't need to remind you how many games per point he averaged during his first run in Cleveland. Still, just because Anthony Bennett is bad by number one pick standards, is he truly worse than many of the undrafted rookies or 10-day contract players who get no playing time? In a vacuum, if you remove the media drama from being a number one pick, I can technically name statistically worse players than Anthony Bennett. Take for example James on Curry, who had the shortest career in NBA history so far. His entire career lasted 3.9 seconds. You literally just watched everything he's ever did in terms of official NBA time. He has zero win shares, zero points per game, zero everything in all stats except playing one game during the 2009-2010 NBA season at the age of 24 for the Clippers. But does this mean James on Curry is the least talented basketball player to ever play in the NBA? Intangibly? Probably not. He did average 24 points per game in the G League, but then again he only played three G League games. And this is why without true intangibles and non-numerical gameplay to evaluate skill off of, for this pick it really only leaves us with making a statistical decision, and thus the worst or least best player to never win an NBA championship is statistically James on Curry, who is not related to Steph Curry or LeBron James, FYI. The worst player with just one ring is you. Actually, it is you. That's right, you, and by you I mean San Yu, who won a championship with the Lakers in 2009 beating the Magic. San was just a 23-year-old rookie from China who only played 10 NBA games, averaging a half point per game. But I think the more accurate term would be to say he averaged two games per point, since you can't actually score half points in the NBA. As for the worst player with two rings, who said Michael Jordan doesn't know how to draft champions? He certainly does, as Adam Morrison is a two-time champion. Adam was drafted third overall in 2006 by MJ's Charlotte Bobcats. He went on to win two rings with the Lakers in 2009 and 2010, beating the Magic and Celtics. Charlotte really needs to stop trading their drafted players to LA because they always end up winning championships when that happens. The Lakers, on the other hand, need to trade for whoever Charlotte drafts, because this ends up always well for them, and could help LeBron win his fifth ring. The worst or least best NBA player with three rings is Dickie Simpkins, and to be fair, he's actually a solid NBA player. If you go down the three ring list and beyond, it gets harder and harder to find bench riders, because clearly if a dynasty team wanted you for more than two seasons, you have legitimate value for their roster. It's easy to grab one or two rings as a bench rider, but three plus, if you're staying for that long, it's because that team needs you on some level. Dickey averaged four points per game playing for the Chicago Bulls, and he won his three rings during Jordan's second three-peat. You could swap Dickey with Bill Wennington, Judd Busher, or Randy Brown, but they had longer overall careers compared to Simpkins' seven-year career. The worst or least best NBA player with four rings is Eugene Guerrilla. Much like the three-ring pick, Eugene is actually a pretty solid NBA player, 
there's just so much competition in the four ring category, and pretty much none of them are bench riders. Gene played four seasons in the NBA, and he was a champion in every single one of them going four for four, four peating from rookie to veteran. Patrick McCall won three rings out the gate, but Eugene won four. The reason why he gets chosen on this list is because he only played eight minutes per game and averaged roughly three points per game with a PER of nine. Rest in peace to Eugene. The worst or least best player with five rings is Steve Kerr. Now Steve is actually a really good three-point specialist and put on an absolute show during the Spurs 42-15 run in game six of the 2003 Western Conference Finals as he hit four clutch three-pointers to allow the Spurs to come back and seal that series. With that in mind, compared to all the other five ring champions, He's the only one that either didn't average more than 10 points per game, made an all-star team, or an all-NBA defensive team. There are only four players with six rings. These players are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bob Cousy, Michael Jordan, and Scottie Pippen. This is a close call between Bob and Scottie. While Bob has the better trophy case since he is an MVP, the only reason Scottie doesn't have an MVP is because he played alongside the goat of the sport, Michael Jordan. Bob is the better offensive talent, but Scotty is the better overall two-way player. While Bob is an eight-time assist champion, he was winning those averaging around seven assists per game for many of those seasons. Scotty in his best seasons was also putting up seven and six assists per game as a forward, which is quite a lot for his position. Factoring Scotty's defense and offense, I would put him ahead of Bob in an all-time ranking. Only three players have seven rings. Those three are Robert Ory, Jim Lustikoff, and Frank Ramsey. Frank is a Hall of Fame player who averaged over 15 points per game throughout his prime, so this is a close call between Big Shot Rob and Jim. I'm going with Jim because Rob proved that he can be both a solid starter and a role player coming off the bench, whereas Jim was mostly a bench player averaging 6 points per game. Rob was averaging over 10 points per game in the early days of his career as a starter and then averaged 7 points per game throughout the entirety of his career. This pick goes to Jim, he's still a solid NBA player though. Rest in peace to Jim. Only 4 players have 8 rings, these 4 are John Havlicek, Tom Heinsohn, Casey Jones, and Tom Sanders. All all of these guys are Hall of Fame legends and greats, so when I pick one, I'm not picking the worst, but more so the least best. My pick is Casey Jones, as he's the only player on this list to average single digit points per game at 7 points per game, but he's still a great player. Rest in peace to Casey Jones. Only one player has 10 rings, so by default this goes to the legendary Sam Jones. Rest in peace to Sam. And only one player has 11 rings, and that goes to one of the all-time greats, Bill Russell. So here is the worst or least best NBA player at every ring total. Let me know what you think of this list and what you want to see in the future. Don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Rebound Rewind and I'll fast forward to you later.